Hey guys, welcome back to Time Machine Scale Models. Well, the other day, Don Piggott over at Don's Garage posed a really good question. And his question was, what motivated you to start a YouTube channel? I think this goes back to my intro video and why I was starting the YouTube channel, but um, it's worth revisiting. Anyway, why I started my YouTube channel was that I wanted to network and I wanted to build relationships with other people in the modeling community, specifically um, auto modelers, you know, and uh, build friendships and stuff like that, which I've done and continue to do so. Um, I talk with several people via text, telephone, um, frequently. Some are um, other content creators, some are not. And it's pretty cool because you can bounce ideas off them. You can talk techniques. You can talk whatever. And uh, you can get trades done and stuff like that. All, all kinds of different stuff. And it's been good because you know in the area that you live, there are other model builders. But you may never ever come across them unless you belong to a club or you frequent the same hobby shop. And, um, and that's the thing. Uh... There are no clubs per se around me that I know of, uh, and all the modeling shows are pretty much on the other side of the state. So I really don't know anybody in West Michigan area that builds model cars. I'm sure they're out there, I just haven't met them yet. Um, as a segue, one of my goals for 23 is that I'm going to start a local uh, modeling club right over here. And hopefully that'll build to the point where we can have uh, a show over here, something like what Detroit Area Auto Modelers does on the other side of the state. And they put on two phenomenal shows a year. I mean, it would be great if we, we had a show half that size um, at least once a year. And that would be great. So that's, a, that's another goal that I'd like to shoot for. Let's get back to uh, my motivation and stuff. So the other motivation was to learn new skills, okay? Now, I've always considered myself a... I don't know. I mean, I just did it for fun, right? I've never built a show quality model. Um, never really was into the show scene. Um, and I just did it for fun. I, I was happy building shelf queens and enjoying them myself, you know. And every once in a while, people would come over and they would see my models and they would look at them and be, you know, they would give, you know, accolades and pats on the back and, well done, buddy. Um, and I was satisfied with that. But I always knew that I could take it one, two, three steps higher. And I think by being on social media, and specifically YouTube, I think you hold yourself to a higher standard. And I think it motivates you to learn new skills and techniques from all these other model builders that are phenomenal, that do take their stuff to the shows. You can learn from them. I mean, I learn from every one of you, and it doesn't matter what level you think you build at. Um, I learn tips and tricks from just about everybody. From the person that uh, just started out all the way to the top echelon of guys and gals that take their stuff to shows. Everybody has something to offer. And that's probably one of the best parts about the modeling community that there is. Every single member has something to offer. I enjoy watching everybody, and it does not matter what they're doing. Gavin, I enjoy watching him paint his figures. I enjoy everybody doing their armor and their weathering techniques and all that other stuff. Jimmy Ledford with some of his outrageous builds. Um, old Tom, you know. And, of course, our friend Don Piggott. Because Don is patient, and, uh, you know, he, he shows how he does things. Uh, a new modeler would be well to watch his channel because he would they would be able to increase their skill tenfold just by watching a few videos of Don's and you know everybody has something to offer uh, so that goes back to uh, showing my stuff um, another motivation was to showcase my skills and techniques okay and like I said, everybody has something to offer, and maybe I don't have all the tips and techniques that some other guys do, but 
I do have some tips and techniques that, that are different or vary from everybody else's. So the other uh, thing was to help others that were new to the hobby or even those who have been in the hobby for a long time that were looking to increase their skills. And um, I also want, you know, it, it goes to um, giving back to the community, right? And that's why I am a fervent supporter of just about everybody that comes along. Okay, big and small, it doesn't matter. You have 50 subs, well, we're going to get you to 75 subs because I'm going to give you a shout out, I'm going to post something. You guys know that. Uh, I'm going to support those channels the way that I was supported by all of you. I mean, I think that's what we need to do in the community when they see us supporting one another, whether we're large YouTube channel or we're just starting out. I think we all need to do our part to support one another. Okay, and um, as Mark Batson points out, when the model companies see that we support each other and that we're pushing each other and that we're pushing each other's content, I think that helps us all in the long run. You know, they, they listen to us. They're, they're like, wow, you know, these guys are asking for these specific kits or they want new kits. They want fresh material instead of the same repop stuff over and over. So I think when we band together, and we push each other and we promote each other, it goes a really, really long way in the eyes of, of the model companies. The money and monetization never enters into it, and I'm going to tell you why. I have friends that make a living on YouTube, and they make a very lucrative, lucrative living. And it's not easy. It's not one of those things where you just go in front of a camera and you know, you know, it, it doesn't matter how many subs you have, you know, it, it's very difficult. It's difficult to build an audience. It's difficult to build a brand. It's even more difficult to maintain it for any longevity. And I have some friends that make, you know, six figure salaries on YouTube and it's a job. It's a seven day a week, 365 day a year job. And they hustle and they got to continuously hustle or those paychecks do not come in um, we worry about one or two subs on these we worry about getting to a thousand or, or 500 or whatever these guys are worried about getting to 50,000 60,000 a hundred thousand two hundred thousand a million subs even okay one guy I know has over a million subs and he's made a living on YouTube for quite some time pretty good living these guys depend on it it's pretty much their career for most of us it's a hobby yeah you have your one or two out there that have you know a lot of subs and they're they're probably making a little bit of money they're pulling in a little bit of money but they're they're nowhere near making a living on YouTube right now in order to make a living on YouTube this would have to be your full-time everything I mean you'd have to pretty much give up everything and make sure that you're filming every single thing you do and I just don't think the modeling community is big enough for that you know what I mean I, I don't think it's I don't think it's a subject matter that uh, draws that much attention um, that that many people do it's, it's you know it's almost like a subcategory of life what do you what do you call that a subculture um, and our subculture does not draw that much attention it's a hobby and I don't have a problem with that because I never looked to, to make a living on YouTube. I like making content. I like building model cars and I like showing them off. I like getting critique. I like people helping me increase my skills and uh, I love interacting with all of you. And that's pretty much my motivation on why I started and I continue to create content for YouTube. Okay guys, so I wanna to talk to you guys about something else totally different. Um, and this is something that you guys have been waiting for. Um, what I have decided to do for the thousand sub giveaway is I am going to give away a $50 Visa gift card. And the reason why I settled on this is because I, I said 
back at 750 that I would like to do something that I can get everybody involved in, whether they're in Australia, New Zealand, UK, wherever, okay? And we, we know, because I've talked to Keith and I've talked to Seamus, um, that they pay duty fees on model kits. So it's pretty expensive getting a model kit to a person over there, okay? It might cost you 50 bucks for the model kit, but then it's going to cost them another 50 to get the model. I, I'm just ar taking arbitrary numbers. I don't know. Correct me uh, if you do know. But, um, you know, it costs them. So it's not really a free model kit for them. However, I can send them a postcard or I can send them a shop card. I could send them a letter. For just a few bucks, I can go ahead and I can put this gift card in there and they could use it anywhere in the world. And I know $50 isn't a whole lot of money, and uh, but, you know, it could help out. And I decided on a Visa gift card, and I'm going to tell you why. Have you seen the cost of eggs lately? You might laugh about that, but here's the thing. I could have gotten a gift card to any numerous um, retailers of, of modeling supplies or models. And you could have used that gift card exclusively for model cars, model ships, model planes, model supplies, whatever. But I, I decided to give away a Visa gift card for the simple fact that maybe a model car isn't what you need. Maybe you need a carton of eggs. Maybe you need some milk. I don't know what you need. But I'd rather you have it and have the freedom to spend it however you want than me box you in and say you have to buy modeling supplies. So that's what I'm going to do. I, I, I was just doing errands today, and that was one of the things that I, was, I went out to do, and I forgot to freaking grab it. Can you believe that? So I, I have to go back out and I get it, but rest assured, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. So basically, what we are going to do is in this video, you're going to comment that you would like to participate, that you want to be in, you want to get your shot to win the $50 Visa gift card. Okay. And I'm going to assign you a number like I always do. All right. Now, you're not going to be automatically entered. You have to tell me that you want to participate, that you are in, and you, you would get like a shot to win the gift card. And I will assign you a number. And as I always do, um, we will run a random generator to pick those numbers. And hopefully this time, being that I now have 1,000 subs, I can go live and I can do that live so you can see it. So um, the deadline to enter is going to be next Wednesday, January 25th, okay, by midnight. And then I'm going to do the drawing on January 26th. And um, like I said, I'm, I'm possibly going to go live and I'm going to try to do it about 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, I'm going to go live. I'll probably do it, I'm, I'm probably going to do a, a test sometime this week coming up to make sure that I can go live and then once I know that uh, I can go live I will I will put it on my community post or something like that so you guys can see that I am going live at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time January 26th at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard okay did I lose you because I just confused myself all right so Wednesday the 25th by midnight Eastern Standard Time is the deadline to enter, okay? Thursday, January 26th at 7 p.m. I'm going to draw, possibly live. Now, you do not need to be on the live feed to win. You don't have to participate in the live feed. I'm just letting you know. We're going to do the uh, random number generator at 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time on Thursday, January 26th. All right, well, with that said, as far as that goes, I want to wish you guys good luck to all that enter. Next up, I want to talk about my shopping spree today. Stick around. All right, guys, thanks for sticking around. Well, I went shopping today, and I supported the local hobby shop uh, by the tune of $110. Yep, $110. Bucks. Um, you ever go somewhere, and you start spending money in your tallying it in your head and you're like oh that's you know 50 60 bucks 
Well, as I was going up to the cash register, I was thinking, oh, you know, 65 bucks, maybe 70, right? When he rung me up and he told me 108, 99, I about passed out. But you know what? It's all part of doing business and it's all part of the hobby. Um, no buyer's remorse, right? So let me tell you about what I got. So the other day I mentioned I want to try the Tamiya Extra Thin, so I got me a bottle of that. So you guys say it works really, really well. I've been using the uh, Mr. Cement probably about a year now, and I'm not dissatisfied with it, but I wanted to try the Tamiya Extra Thin. See what it's all about. I see all of you guys using it. Uh, I went to go pick up paints, and obviously I picked up the paints that I needed, and uh, I picked up the... Um, aluminum, the Alclad aluminum, and then I picked up the Alclad polished aluminum. I'm not sure what the difference is, but they do look a little bit different in the bottle, and we're going to see because as I get going in this um, Mad Gassers group build, I'm going to start using them. So, and of course, you got your Tamiya Gloss Black here, TS14 for the base coat. And Tamiya TS34 Camel Yellow. This is going to be used on the McLaren. Okay, so this is a color that closely resembles the uh, color that McLaren used for their uh, Mark 8D. And uh, the second can is for the uh, 55 Chevy that I did for Craig over at Modeler's 48 hour group build last year. Um, I had an unfortunate incident and I had to strip the paint and it needs to be repainted and refinished and uh, I had to buy another can. So look for that video too. It'll most likely be t uh, titled, um, hmm, let's see, after the first 48. Anyway, picked up a couple kits too. This thing has been on the shelf at that hobby shop. I don't know. Two years, two years, okay? And it's been marked down to 1998 for those two years and nobody's bought it. So I built this kit way back and I've seen some of you guys build this kit too. And I decided, you know what? I'm just gonna grab this kit and throw it in the stash. I don't have too many Ford pickups and uh, I actually like this one. So um, I have parts and pieces of this one in my parts bins over there, but. It's been a while since I built it, so I'm probably going to end up building this sooner or later. And I finally pulled the trigger. I had to, guys, and I'm going to tell you why I had to. I keep having visions of the Revell 67 Camaros in my head, and I do not know why. I don't know why. You guys know that the Badman is an expensive kit to be had, okay? People want 130 bucks or 140 bucks for that on on Evil Bay, and and I can't find one at a show that's sub 100 dollars. You know, it's it's usually like 120. Um, and you also know that the 55 Chevy Street Machine, the black one with the flames and stuff, which I have a few of them, um, they're not cheap either. So I needed to pull the trigger, and Hobby Lobby. I haven't seen the 55 Chevy at Hobby Lobby in like three weeks. And I was like, nope, we're not doing this again. So the next time I see it, I'm going to pick it up. Now, I would have ordered it online if I hadn't seen it. And to be honest with you, I was looking at Hobby Link on eBay, 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 on eBay, and they're like, like 27 and change, right? Plus the shipping. Well, I paid $29.98 for this, guys, at the local hobby shop. So, better deal, I think. You know, I didn't have to pay shipping. And I can put my grubby paws on it right now. So, and, um, yep. So, I'm not sure how I'm going to build that up. I'm not sure if I'm going to build it up as a bad man. Because decals are available. Or I'm going to build it up just like that. I think that's pretty sharp. It's patriotic, which I love. And uh, it would look badass either way, right? So, uh, stay tuned for that. Who doesn't love a 55? And if you say you don't love a 55, oh, oh, I don't know. All right, guys. I think that is all I have for this video. So go back 
and watch Don Pickett's uh, video and where he poses the question about what motivates you what motivated you to start a YouTube channel okay and uh, you'll see where that's coming from everybody's doing it only the cool kids though all right guys thanks for watching